Hey, what is going on, guys? Dr. D from One Hive Invicta here, bringing you a recap from, from our most recent war. Well, technically not our most recent war. Uh, recently, we had a friendly war challenge with Three Point Park. Um, that war went uh, very well. Um, we won by um, just... Uh, I think we won actually by eight or nine stars, but uh, I went to do a recap from that war uh, the day after the war was, was ended, and it was gone. And I was, I was a bit frustrated. I didn't realize that our uh, friendly challenge war, re uh, war um, videos or replays would be gone that quickly. I'll have to get on that a little bit sooner next time. Uh, regardless, we finished that uh, friendly war with Three Point Park. And we went to spin a random war, and I was looking at my iPad, and I saw the, the, the sweetest thing that I can ever see, which is war has been declared against a clan I already know. And that means we were set up for a random elite war. Uh, this random re elite war was with the House of L, which are some great guys over there. Um, unfortunately... <laughs> Uh, we we realized quickly that we were at a bit of a, t a town hall disadvantage. Uh, we'll have a look at that here in a second. But yeah, I think um, we had the same number of town hall 11s, but uh, they had four more town hall 10s than we had, uh, which means things are going to get uh, or things things can get um, pretty hairy because it means a lot more dips are able to happen uh, from. Uh, the, when, when the Town Hall 9s can't get cleared. And, and this uh, hasn't been an issue for Invicta in a while. We haven't had to worry about Town Hall 10 dips. Uh, I don't, yeah, we didn't even have a Town Hall 10 dip in this past war with House of L. Uh, however, um, we still were able to uh, pull this off. And I'm going to break this up a little bit differently. Uh, as soon as I saw that we, we were at such a disadvantage, I decided to make a video right away. So we're going to show, I'll show a quick video here that, just talks about just prior to the war, during war prep, uh, looking at the uh, town hall disadvantage that we have and going through a couple of the different town halls that they have. They actually had um, an engineered account way down at, at number 28. They had a town hall 11, uh, followed by a, an 8.5 and then a town hall 8. Obviously, we don't run um, any point fives um uh, or at least eight point fives uh in farm wars we do throw in nine point fives but those nine point fives don't wind up getting into our arranged wars uh regardless this was not an arranged war there's nothing wrong with seeing a couple of nine point fives or eight, even eight point fives uh which the, the house of l had i believe they also had a nine point five um at any rate let's go ahead and have a look at this uh disadvantage that we were up against at least up top So, if you look here, you can see the disadvantage we were up against. Now, we have three Town Hall 11s, and they also have three Town Hall 11s. But when it comes to Town Hall 10s, we have Town Hall 10s from 4 all the way down to 12. And, in fact, 12 uh, is only a 9.5. That's not even a Town Hall 10. Over here, they have Town Hall 10s from 4 all the way down to 16. Now, 16, I believe, is a, is a 9.5. Yep. Uh, but still, um, even that 9.5 is difficult to clear when you're talking about uh, having an additional bomb, those additional walls, the additional space. Uh, nonetheless, um, we uh, gave it our best effort, um, or we will give it our best effort. Obviously, I'm recording this before the, the war has happened. Um, when we look then, uh, Town Hall 9s, um, they move all the way down. We have Moose here. Let's have a look. This is a Town Hall 11. Um, you can see the troops there are roughly uh, Town Hall 9 troops. Um, pretty weak heroes, despite having a, a Grand Warden. Um, but, as far as defenses go, um, some... Uh, you know, basically maxed Town Hall 9 defenses. Oh, except for those cannons. <laughs> um, oh, and those, I don't think those Archer Towers are maxed for Town Hall 9. Um, then uh, we can keep scrolling down here. They do have a Town Hall 8. Um, that obviously will be a quick clear. Uh, we have a Town Hall 8.5 here. There's no Expos. 
Uh, no Expos here either. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that base goes. Uh, Expos start here um, with just a single Expo, it looks like. Huh? Am I missing something? No? Just one Expo. Um, and here we have a couple of Expos. Level 1s. Uh, level 1 Expos. So, um, it looks like they're Town Hall 9s. We should have no problem clearing them. Thank you, Trumpy. Uh, as far as Town Hall 10s go, though, we're gonna we're at a pretty serious disadvantage. Be interesting to see how this um, how this uh, base or how this war uh, wraps up. I have a feeling that um, it's going to come down to Town Hall 10 triples, and we we just have fewer attacks. So uh, wish us luck. Okay, so this wound up being our final score, 79-78, um, uh, 89.2% um, to 88.83%. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the attacks. Um, so, we are going to start, uh, we're going to start at the bottom with some Town Hall 9s, but I have two really, really cool Town Hall 10 attacks that I'm going to show today, um, as well as uh, four different um, Town Hall 9 attacks. We will start with Dion on number 26, who is bringing a cold-blooded Lalo. Alright, so you see um, both of those um, Expos are on air. You can still do a Lalo uh, with, with Expos on air. So let's speed this up until he starts his attack coming. There he comes. Uh, one of the reasons that I picked this attack is um, I think people have really struggled with bowlers lately and getting bowlers to funnel appropriately. And you notice how Dion does it here. Leaves a bunch of stuff in the middle that just sucks those bowlers in. He's going to get a bowler that goes off to the left there. And uh, they get pulled in a little bit by the queen, but a Tesla pops, and it pulls that, that same bowler out there. Um, at any rate, uh, gets his bowlers in. For the most part, he's taken out two ADs. Um, that's all they're going to take out, incidentally. Uh, sends in the first hound. That hound is going to pop. He brings in another hound right behind it. That hound is nice and fresh. It's going to last for quite some time. Will at least last through the loons here. Start heading over to the next uh, defense, and you notice how the loons have cleared everything except that straight path over to the next air defense. Uh, they take out that expo, and just as they get close, that hound pops. Doesn't matter. Tons of loons, and there's only two air targeting defenses left. Now one. Now that's down, the, the Tesla goes down, and it's it. That's It's cleanup. Now the scary thing is there's a lot of cleanup left, and all of those loons are clumped in a group. Fortunately, he had six loons sitting in the bag. He starts sprinkling them in around, and cleanup goes quickly. Speed it up just a little bit here. There we are. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Dion. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're going to look at Captain Sparrow. He hit 21 with a hobo, a stoned hobo to be exact, or as I like to call it, the Cheatham. Now, for some reason, he decided to bring a, um, a single Valk, uh, and, and you'll see that... I think he might have, I don't know if he didn't even realize that he had that Valk in his army camp because he deploys his whole kill squad and they all are going to move in here in just a second. And then, uh, so here comes those three. Here comes his bowlers. Three golems are in. King is down. Queen is down. Jump is down. Uh, out comes the CC. And then finally, out comes that one, uh... That one Valk in the back there, but at any rate, Rage is down, Heal is down, Kill Squad is ripping up this Tesla farm, 
down goes the, the CC or the um, town hall. All of the golems are going to get clumped up here in this pocket. Or, I mean, all of the um, bowlers get clumped up in this pocket, but it actually works out very nicely. They, they clear stuff all the way up into that uh, final pocket there, that final compartment. Um, hogs come around. Heel is going to go down right there. And now just three, four defenses left, and it is cleanup after that. Speed it up just a little bit. Hasn't even used the queen's ability yet. Last defense is gone. Kill those skellies, and cleanup starts. Ooh, only three hogs left, but he manages. Pops the queen's ability, and they just start working their way around. But that is it. Nice job, Captain Sparrow. Tree stars in the bag. Way to go. All right, who do we have next? We are going to look at Heartless. You know, I don't know what to even call this attack. Um, let's pause it here and just have a look at this army camp. Two witches, three golems, 14 loons, four wizards, a baby drag, um, some wall breakers, and a couple of uh, archers. It's it's very interesting. You'll see um, he, he does wind up losing one of these witches, but we've all been wondering since the update, uh, what do witches do now? You know, can we, can we, have they become a viable troop again? And I think a lot of people are starting to find out that, yeah, they are. They've become a viable troop again. And so he's only bringing two witches here, but you'll see that one of them makes it all the way through the raid. The other one makes it, well, about, about halfway through, uh, clearing defenses, but down with, uh, the three golems right off the bat, um, starts to set his funnel again, cutting the funnel on the sides, leaving trash in the middle to suck those bowlers into the center. King comes down. Wall breakers are down, or at least the test wall breaker. Now here comes two more wall breakers. And, oh, we must have had a one wall breaker fail, but he's going to punch through this wall here in just a second. Down with the bowlers. And one more punch by that golem. Boy, they are... They, they have weak arms. Down with the um, witches now. And everything is in. Jump is down. CC has come out. He's poisoned. And this raid is on. Here comes the bowlers into their rage. And don't you love seeing bowlers under rage? Man, they just, they just, just crush stuff. So, Core is pretty much wiped out. All the ADs are gone, and now that all of the ADs are gone, he starts bringing in loons. You'll see that on defenses that target loons, he can, or, or at least point defenses that target loons, he's bringing two loons each for those. Um, Heartless does something interesting sometimes, actually. You'll see him deploy a single loon, followed by two loons right behind it, and using that single loon as a kind of tank. Um, two archers go down there to clear stuff. Still got bowlers up. Still has witches up. Still has a queen's ability. Just, just crushing this base. There it is. Last defense, and we are on to clean up. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, heartless and very cool attack. Just loved it. All right. Next. My man Iggy, and I don't want to tell you how he deployed these uh, drags, but um, from the way he describes it, it wasn't pretty. All right. So Iggy's coming in with a mass drag attack. Um, I, sh I show one of these on almost every video that I make. We've got guys that are just crushing it with these mass drag attacks at Town Hall 9. Um, this one does not include a, town, a, a queen walk or anything. Um, I did my first drag attack in this war. Um, I don't think I've done a dragon attack since I was a Town Hall 7 or, or Town Hall 8. So it was uh, it was kind of fun to do that. Um, and I followed what Iggy, Iggy did here. So uh, he was able to... He zap quaked two of the air defenses. Uh, Queen goes down with the idea of killing the uh, single air... Getting that single air defense over there. And once she does... 
right there. And, and boy, Queen just barely made it to get to that air defense. Now that it's down, drags start coming in. Just like any troop or just like any attack, you've got to set a good funnel. And so he starts by trying to funnel with a drag up there around the 10 o'clock position. Um, then brings a, a bunch of mass drags in. Uh, it kind of gets um, hosed a little bit here. You'll see that that um, that Lava Hound goes straight to that AD. And ideally, those uh, loons or, or drags would be heading over towards that AD to, to take that out while it's tanking or being tanked by the Lava Hound. Did not happen, um, but uh, fortunately, dragons do lock on to that immediately once they're in range, and a single drag takes that thing out. Gone. Um, I, think, I think that drag sacrificed itself to get that AD. Uh, at any rate... Uh, at this point, I mean, I feel like calling it a, a cleanup attack at this point. Um, he's really got three-point defenses, four-point defenses that can target drags, those two splash damages, and of course, the big bombs. Um, but we can speed it up here a little bit. It's just, just too many dragons. It's just overwhelming this base. And... There we go. Drags are going to come up, waste a bunch of time on that king. Um, and there we go. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Iggy. All right. So let's move on to a couple of Town Hall 10 attacks. We are going to start with number 14. This is JJ. JJ's coming with a Gobaho. A Gobaho at Town Hall 10. Part of the reason I love this attack is it's been a long time since I've seen a Town Hall attack that had no miners and no bowlers. So he's coming in with a Queen Walk initially. He's going to use this walk to clear some trash on the outside, move up, take out a couple of defenses, and then uh, lure the CC with the hog. Takes them out. Hog goes in, and out comes the CC. And we've got ourselves a hound and a loon. He's going to drop a wizard here quickly to help clear out that hound or kill that hound as quick as possible. I mean, one of the problems with Town Hall 10 is... Uh, and, and Town Hall 11 is that the bases are just so much bigger um, and yet the time that you get to clear it is the same amount of course yes you have additional troops but Hound Pops he throws down a couple of minions to help clear out those Lava Pups um, in comes Gollum and Giant to tank and they are tanking of course for Valks so Valks come pouring in perfect jump placement Allows him into two big pockets, or to clear out the, the remainder of that small pocket, then into one big pocket where he can quickly get to one of the Inferno Towers. A uh, new jump comes down. Lots of heavy XP here, so or HP here, so he throws down uh, Rage to kind of clear through some of that stuff. Unfortunately, some skellies pop, and the, the um, Valks run over there to get those skellies, but they do wind up back uh, in this center compartment, they are going to get down this uh, Inferno Tower eventually. Um, but in doing so, the Valks are gone. That's it. Uh, brings in some back, hound, back end hogs and um, a couple of loons on the back end. Hogs aren't going to make it all the way through here. They're close, though. Just, just too much DPS there for all of those hogs. But he's still got a king, a wizard, and a couple of Valks over there, and they're working their way through that pocket. Finally pops the queen's ability. Hasn't even used the king's ability yet. Um, got a wizard over there on cleanup, and a wizard on the, on the left on cleanup as well. And that is it. Queen takes down uh, the last two defenses. And at this point, it is nothing but cleanup. Going to be tree stars in the bag. As soon as he gets that, there we go. And that's it. Nice job, JJ. Okay. Um, let's look at the last Town Hall 10 attack. And that is a hit by Friendly on number 13. And this attack makes me want to go Town Hall 10. So, look at that army composition just for a second. You've got um, an archer, a giant... Four wall breakers, some wizards, some minions, a whole ton of hogs, a couple of golems, some bowlers, and then he's got bowlers in the CC as well. What we're looking at here is a Town Hall 10 uh, Shattered Hobo. 
Let's watch this. So, starts by setting his funnel, um, a few minions in there. We'll just speed this up a little bit. Uh, got an archer up there as well. She comes down, starts helping out. Funnel is set. In comes the golems. He's going to drop a couple of whiz here just to help out with that funnel again, just to cut things a little bit closer on the sides. Wall breakers are down. They're in. Jump comes out. Here comes the bowlers and a giant to tank with them. Poison is down, and down with the Rage, and these bowlers just tear stuff up on Rage. Another Rage goes down right there in the core to help push through all of that heavy DPS, or I mean HP. Um, bowlers take out one Inferno Tower, now they take out a second Inferno Tower. Boom, in comes the Hogs. You notice over on the right-hand side, he threw down a heal spell and completely missed the hogs. Uh, that was an unintentional swag, I'm pretty sure. Uh, nobody swags that soon in a, in, in a Town Hall 10, Town Hall 10. At any rate, um, finally, last defense, hogs get it, and it is cleanup time. Very impressive, uh, with an early swag on a heal. Uh, that is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, friendly. We'll speed it up here. And before I forget, since I didn't go through this at the beginning, uh, props to our six star warriors out there. We had four people with six star or with, with uh, six packs. Friendly was one. Um, the next was Mouthpiece, who is our fearless leader. Uh, next we have Dally. Way down here. Dally had a pretty impressive performance. Two fresh triples, so a, a fresh six-pack. And um, props to Dally because uh, after this war, he moved up to 2.0. Um, and finally, HB. HB had a fresh a fresh triple and a cleanup triple. So nice job and to, to our six-pack warriors. That is it for our war with House of L. A little bit of a disadvantage, but we were able to overcome it. You know, I don't do this very often, but I'm going to show this really quickly. Uh, I missed a war recap with um, uh, a friendly war recap because uh, they, they disappear very, very quickly. Um, but Invicta has just been on a tear lately. So we've beat a lot of really, really great clans. We just finished a war with Dark Souls, um, House of L, South Raiders, Above and Beyond, Knights Templar, Chosen Elite, some big name clans that we have just had uh, an, an excellent, excellent showing lately. So props to everybody in Invicta. You guys have, uh, I, I wish I could do um, videos on, on every every triple that we have. We just don't have time to do that. But man, this, this uh, clan is really quickly um, becoming uh, an, an excellent, or becoming again, I think we had a bit of a rough patch, but becoming again an, an amazing uh, clan to be in, and just, you know, good job, everyone. That is it for me. Um, I am signing off, and until next time, take care.